Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter with some inky fingers from a previous art project. Today we're going to do some sketching. I've had a lot of people ask me about doing portraits and um, and I thought this would be a good opportunity because I was also using a supply that I kind of didn't love when I first got them. These are the Tritone pencils and you know, they're kind of expensive and I guess I was hoping for like some huge like wow um moment when I used them and I, it just never I, I never really clicked and I didn't really give them a fair shake I don't feel like I spent a lot of time with them so I decided the other night I was just kind of trying to figure out exactly what I was going to bring for art supplies on vacation and I thought you know these have never seen the love that they deserve and I thought I'd play with them so I was um just kind of watching TV the other night and doodling in my sketchbook and I drew this face and colored it with the tritone pencils and I was really um I was really having fun with them and actually I'll show you a mangy, a mangy cat that I drew I was just kind of like fooling around with them and you know just kind of scribbling them you know not really worrying about how it came out and um I was just having a good time and then I sketched that eyeball and I thought you know what I bet this would be really fun for portraits because I really enjoyed how that eyeball came out uh, so then I sketched this and that's what we're gonna do today because I figured it's an also a nice way to talk about how to get proportions uh, well on your when you're when you're sketching so the color combinations in these pencils, um, there's some that have like all shades of green, like for landscapes and all shades of blue for landscapes. But for the most part, we're going to use the um, colors that have more golden colors and brown colors in them. And I apologize that the um, audio has changed. I actually live streamed this last week, but um, there was some audio issues. So I'm just re-recording over the areas that there was problems. So um, if you're not used to these tritone pencils, what they are are pencils, colored pencils that have three different colors of wax. And it's almost it looks like granite. If you were to look at the tips of these pencils, Pencils, they're kind of flecked like a granite, granite countertop would be. So you don't exactly know when you're going to get like a shade of brown or a shade of yellow or a shade of orange. So that kind of um, adds to the fun. It can be a little frustrating, but if you decide to kind of go with the flow and let it... Um, be fun then then I think you'll enjoy it now it also comes with a clear blending pencil and pretty much any colored pencil manufacturer makes them and they're like a combination of wax and pumice and um, you can use that to blend your colors for a richer result now I'm gonna draw the oval for the face and what I do is I kind of draw it in the air and let my pinky finger rest on the paper so I'm kind of like drawing a circle with my pinky finger first and when I feel like I've got that oval just about right I let my lead drop onto the uh, pad of paper and then I make some several ovals until I feel like I've really got that design uh, kind of nailed down there. Once I have the basic shape of the face, I want to divide it up into segments to make it easier to line up my features. So I'm drawing a line about halfway through where the eyes are going to rest. And then like halfway between the line from the eye and the chin, I'm going to put another line and that's where the tip of the nose is going to rest. And then I like to put one more line between the line for the nose and the line for the chin. And that's where the mouth is going to be. Or most importantly, it's going to be kind of where the separation between the top and lower lip is going to be. And I just find that a really easy way to line things up. Now, since the portrait is looking straight on, I'm putting a line straight down the center of the face. And that will help me line up all my features. If my person was looking to the left or to the right, I would put that line going uh, over towards the left or the right. But I would put a curve to it since I am lining things up on a sphere. I wouldn't want a straight line. I gotta keep that curve of the face. Like I kind of put a slight curve when I'm putting that line in for the eyes because I know the eyes are going to be just slightly on a curve. Now I like to put another line above and that helps me line up the eyebrows and then I also usually put a line below the eye line just to help me get the bottom of the eyes lined up as well. The amount of touch points that you can put on a portrait I can really help you keep things um, symmetrical and lined up. Now we're going to start off by drawing the nose and uh, some people like to start with a circle for the nose. You can do that. Oh, I usually just put like kind of like a semicircle and have the bottom of that semicircle resting on that really faint line that I put. And then I put two little kind of semicircles or circles on the edge for the nostrils. I find that if I make it like circles and it looks like a Cabbage Patch Kid doll nose. Uh, so I just try to stick to the semicircles. 
Then I personally like to put the little divot underneath the nose, it's above the lips, and then I draw in the uh, line that separates the top and bottom lip, so kind of as the lips touch. I like to get that line in right off the bat because for me, it just helps me kind of line things up. Then I'll thicken it up by putting a the upper lip in there, and I make the upper lip a little thinner than the bottom lip, but a little wider than the bottom lip. So the bottom lip is a little, um, it's a little thicker, but it's also a little narrower in length compared to the top lip. Now, I think the key to keeping your eyes the same is to draw them at the same time. So I'm just kind of very roughly sketching in the right eye, and then I'm going about an eye width apart, and I'm going to sketch in the left eye. So if you look at a face, there are a lot of little uh, guideposts or touch points that help you line things up. Your eyes are one eye width apart. Generally, your the corners of your mouth will line up with either your pupils or the edge of your irises. So as long as you keep that in mind, you're going to have an easy time coming up with a symmetrical face. I also like to get the um, kind of uh, shadow line on the edge of the nose. I kind of taper in the line from the nostril up to the eyebrow and then I work on the eyebrow. And then you've got your eyebrow bone, the brow bone and the eyebrow up here. But again, this all should be really done um, very lightly at this point. Now, looking here, I can see that this eye is a little taller and squatter. So I feel like it needs to be a little shorter and extended out slightly. Make your adjustments small, though, um, until you're sure of what you're doing. It might just mean that it needs to be shorter and it just looks long. It looks more squat because it's too tall, you know, so you just want to try to mirror what you're doing. And the tip is turn it upside down. If you feel like you are, um, if you've got something wrong here, turn it upside down. Then, then you can really see what's going on. I can see that that's too short. I used to do a lot of my tutorials uh, upside down in the early days of my paint, of my channel when I would do, do painting tutorials. And the reason for that is because I didn't, uh, I didn't have a setup with my camera. It could be right set up and I didn't want to edit anything. But the other reason was that if I was working for a reference photo, it's a lot easier actually to draw something upside down than right side up. So there you go. And then your hairline would generally come in, um, like this would all be hair up here. Okay, so your hair doesn't start growing off the top of your head or you'd have a really huge forehead. It would look kind of weird. Well, I mean, it does eventually, I guess, especially for men. It seems like their, their hairline can recede like that, but generally your hair starts right around there and I'm just indicating where I want that to go. Now if you did want to put ears in, the hair is kind of covering the ears here, but uh, generally they they fall between the eyebrows and the nose. Depending if the person is looking up or tip their head, has their head tipped down, it can they can move a little bit, but they're generally, you can almost extend those lines out and put your ears in that way. Um, so they could go like right there and up. But um, I don't think you really, you'd really, We'll just put them in there just so you have that kind of guideline. But again, it's always a good idea to have a, a reference that you're looking at um, when you're trying to do that. Okay. All right, now for the eyes, if you put like a circle in the middle of the eyeball, your person's going to look very surprised. Um, I want more of a relaxed expression, so I'm not going to see like the entire round circle of the iris. I want to get that in there a little bit more, more relaxed. So I'm, I'm having some of that. Oops, she's a little cross-eyed there. Um, so I'm going to have that a little bit off. So we don't see the entire circle. We get some of it up higher. And then I like to leave out the highlight right at the beginning. There's no white pencil here. I, do, I did grab a white, brown, and black just in case I needed them, but there is no white in here, so you really need to use the white of the paper. And I really think that's about all I need for details at this moment. You might want to think about like cheekbones. They generally will kind of, the, the most indented part of the cheek will line up with right about where the nose is. If you do want to like kind of keep that in mind for like shading and whatnot. Uh, but I, and let's get the neck in there real quick and then we'll be ready to do some coloring. All right, I'm going to take a quick look at the chat. Does anybody have any questions about uh, face proportions? I'm just going to look real quick. 
Um, Coffee Baldwin, uh, when you get time, can you demonstrate the darker skin tone? I will be doing that this afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern time. I'll be doing a, a watercolor mixing skin tone tutorial. Um, let's see. Okay, I don't see any questions right there. So we're going to go right ahead and look at some of these colors. And I think I'm going to start off with this color here that's very similar to what we just used, except it's got darker, richer tones. And I'm going to get the eyes started here. So the eyes are probably the, the trickiest part in the sense that you want them to be the same. Don't be afraid to flip that paper upside down or to stand up if you're sitting at a table so that you can get the right... Um, you can get you can get it at a true angle so you're not seeing it skewed at all. Sometimes if you're sitting um, at a table or you might be working with the pencils on your lap, you might get a little be a little too close to it and, and have it a little messed up. You can also refer to my watercolor eye painting tutorial if you want a little bit more um, info on, on drawing and painting eyes. And when you do your eyelashes, I'm not putting a ton of eyelashes in. But your eyelashes, um, as they're further out away from your eyeball, they're going to go away. But it, like if I was putting an eyelash here, it would actually be kind of coming straight down. And if I was doing eyelashes in here, they'd actually be curving like that way. And they're, so they're going more that way. Let me just grab a little strand of paper. And um, so if I had this eyeball, okay, and say the nose is over here. So eyelashes an eyelash that's right there would kind of be going straight up and it would slightly slightly curve out more as you got towards the outside but then as you go around this way your eyelashes actually start to curve that way okay so you just want to kind of keep that in mind if you were doing eyelashes you know what way they would actually come out that's why you but usually you have more eyelashes towards the outside of your eye um, so that's where you've got more more definition. I want to define the the bottom of the nose. You got to be careful around the nose not to do too much, or you can get kind of like a little piggy nose look. And a little, I want the nose to be kind of cute. So I'm putting this little uh, shadow up above. You can shadow that little divot under the nose. I like to give a I like a little cleft chin. I think that's super cute. Darken this line in here. And you can do all this in, in pencil. You do not have to do color pencil if you prefer. I also like to get the crease above the eye. I'm kind of turning my pencil because I'm like, oh, I want to get that dark brown. <laughs> But I'm not exactly sure what's going to come up. But I think that's kind of what I like about these pencils now that they've had like, you know, a year and a half to sit on my shelf neglected. And I've actually given them a, a chance here. Um, I like that I kind of have that randomness. I don't have to think about it. And then when you're trying to, to sketch somebody and make it look like a specific person, you want to pay attention to things like, okay, what, um, how thick are their eyebrows? How close are their eyebrows together? How um you know when you think of like caricature artists they find the thing that makes a face look unique and they capitalize on it like the, some people's eyes are closer together and they'll capitalize on that or someone has this interesting shaped nose like you look at um caricature caricatures of presidents like you look at richard nixon they're always gonna you know accentuate his nose or if you look at um you know george w bush they put his eyes closer together because that's a feature that he has um and for some reason, those are the two caricatures I can think of. But, you know, everybody, they'll take that whatever is the most prominent feature and they will capitalize on it. So while I have this darker color out, I'm going to go ahead and gently accentuate the cheekbones very, very softly here. I'm going to be using a lot of the white of the paper. I'm not going to try to uh, cover every scrap of paper here. Also, I'm going to go in here on the neck and get some shadow. And since I have these three colors kind of working together, I'm going to get a very 
a uh, nice shadow. And I can do little, little circles if I want to kind of just not have any visible lines. So I'm using very little pressure. Like I could, I could hold a pencil way up here because I'm using so little pressure that I don't, you know, I just want to get a little bit of, a little bit of that color down there. I, I find circles a little bit uh, forgiving this way. You can use the edge of your pencil too. Okay, and also give a little bit of shadow under the, the lip there like that. All right, now I want to go in with the green eyes here. And I think I'm going to use this one that's got a little bit darker green first. I'm going to go over that brown that I already put in for the pupil. Oh, and I will take Q&A at the end of this live stream. So if uh, if you had a question, uh, the moderators can help you now. If you want to ask any of the moderators, they're, they're happy to help you if they know the answer. But if you have a question for me, I will take questions at the end of the live stream. And I don't reckon this will take all that long to, uh, to sketch out. So I'm going to start, if I see that I'm getting a dark line off of my, my colored pencil, I am going to do the darker areas. So I'm going over the iris, uh, the pupil rather, I'm getting right underneath the lash line where it's going to be darker, and I'm going around to the outside of the iris. And then the same thing, you do one to one eye, do, then do it to the other, because you will forget exactly how you did stuff. Like the, if you caught my stream uh, that I did at 10 this morning, um, I did the Stone Angel, and it had been a couple weeks since I originally sketched that in my sketchbook. And you just forget <laughs> the order that you did things in, and it's like, oh, that's... Then someone's like, how come that doesn't look anything like the one that you showed at the beginning? It's like, oh, because it's a different day, and I'm apparently in a different mood, and I, completely, I must have just had a brain cramp. Who knows? I have a lot of brain cramps this week. I must be ready for vacation. Um, I'm grabbing this lighter, this lighter pencil here. Again, it's shades of green, but it's lighter colors. I really think this is probably designed for landscape use, but I think it's really fun to do a portrait with it. I I honestly I wish that they had the um I wish they had the larger set at AC Moore when I bought this because I think it would have been very beneficial to have more colors. I'm using this color here. It's got some yellow in it. And I'm kind of like putting the strokes in, I'm kind of going in lines like, I'll show you this again, I'm kind of going in lines like towards the iris, green on green, I'm sure that shows up really great. But I want to kind of get that, uh, that bit of texture in like that. Okay, and now I want to get some of the, um, the color of the white of the eye and so this color actually has red gray and blue so it's perfect for this uh, so let's see I'm just gonna gently color around the edge of the white of the eye and see what I'm getting I mean kind of a gray so this is where it's a little tricky because you want you want the red pink color to be right in the um, I'm gonna scribble it I want I want to kind of isolate a little bit of that red I might have to use the pinker Color. I want to get some of the red kind of in the mid, in the next to the corners of the eyes, but I like getting that gray in the white of the eyes because then it looks a little bit more like your eyes are not white. The white of your eyes are not really white. You have other colors reflected in them and you've got the little veins. Not that you really see that much detail here, but I want to get some of that in there. So that's what I'm going for there. And now for the lips, I'm going to use this color here. And I'm going to very lightly start coloring here. I want the bottom lip a little bit lighter, really light circles. And the top lip, I want a little darker because your top lip, uh, the angle is kind of like um, tilted in. And your bottom lip is kind of tilted out and, and reflecting light. It's more pronounced. So your top lip usually appears a little bit darker. So that's what I'm going for here. It's kind of like a little crash course portrait uh, drawing. And another thing you could do, say, like you could work on a toned paper. You could work on a paper that's peach or sandy or brown or um, whatever color you want and that's closest to the skin tone you're trying to match. And that's really going to help 
um, so that you, it helped kind of get some of the work done for you. So all you have to do is kind of do the highlights and the lowlights, and it's got your midtones taken care of. So by adding some shading on the outside of the bottom lip, I kind of get that, that fuller look. And I'm just kind of slowly building up because I'm not exactly sure what color I'm going to get on these pencils. But it's really fun. I'm really, uh, I really enjoy that. A little more darker color up top. And I feel like I want to do maybe a little bit. I feel like I would, like the outside of the mouth doesn't have that much definition. Okay. And now for the cheeks, I'm going to use the same color that I was using for the lips. And I'm very gently going to, going to do circles. I want to give like a blush to the cheeks here. So again, I mean, I'm still skipping around. I haven't finished anything, any part of this face yet. I'm skipping around so that everything is going to be done to the same level. So I might decide that, oh, yeah, that's good. I'm going to leave it like that. And it's not like I have lips already completely done and the eyes and everything else are just really soft focused. If I decide I want to stop with everything at that level of focus, then I can. You could use a side of the pencil if you're not getting the results you want at the tip, but I this is pretty blunt, so I'm just using it right on the uh, right on the tip of the pencil because I'm not one to sharpen my pencil as much as a lot of other colored pencil artists. Probably because I don't use colored pencils as my main type of art. It seems like a shame to stop and sharpen all the time and waste all that lead. So I just I only sharpen it if I need to absolutely need to get like a detail. I need to give it a little pink on the chin at the bottom of the nose. Oh my goodness, it's about time for lunch. My tummy's grumbling. Take a lunch break between this and the 1 p.m. stream, which will be skin tone mixing. Hopefully my hand's not completely in the way. I'm just, just again, doing those circles. I want to thank all of the moderators that showed up today that's helping out in the chat. That is super awesome. And I want to thank everybody that is uh, that's watching live. That really, really helps my channel because this this uh, the replay won't be available till next week. Um, so it just helps YouTube say, oh, people have watched this. People have liked this. People gave it a thumbs up already. We're going to show it to people. So it's it really does help um, keep my channel thriving. Okay, and maybe just a little bit on the forehead because I, I've done it to, to, to so many other places that I feel like I want to I wanna make sure that every bit of the skin has a lot of the same characteristics. And I think I'm going to do some on the neck as well. Just to warm that up a bit. Okay, so now I am going to um, add some more shading in the face. I'm going to go in with this. Um, this is the it's kind of kind of a brown, orange, and like a yellow ochre color. And I'm going to add this under the hair. Get this under the cheekbone. And then you just have to be careful because that brown came in not when I, where I wanted it, but I'm just going to have to make it work by adjusting the values around it. If you're using regular colored pencils, you can get exactly the color you want, but I'm using these tritone ones, so I'm kind of getting what I get. But that's all right because I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of fun. It's fun to, to do something different. that brown over the iris to warm it up and just make it look a little more a little more depth give it a little more depth I'll shadow on the side of the nose here so you can skip around too if you see that you're um, getting more of the brown 
shadows, then you could go someplace where you need a darker shadow. If you see you're getting more of the orange or the yellow, you can go into a place where you don't need quite such a dark shadow. So, um, so it actually kind of can make your sketching a little quicker because you just kind of skip around to whatever color comes next. I did find some pencils that were very similar to this that were marketed to kids. The leads are not as soft though. I was using them the other day. I picked them up in uh, Denver last year and uh, they're kind of cool, but the, the leads were not as soft. The thing I did like about them is that like they would just be all shades of green or all shades of pink. So you had a little bit more control there instead of these kind of unusual colors. But I kind of like these unusual colors now that I'm getting the hang of it. Okay, let's see if I have enough dark in there to get some eyelashes. I think I might cheat and use the other the other uh, pencils for the eyelashes, though. Because I'm not getting a really reliable dark line there. All right, I'm going to do some of the hair, and I'm going to go in with this, the nice uh, kind of orangey reds. So I think that looks pretty with the green eyes. Seems to be getting mostly orange right now. I'm going to go in with a darker one that I just used for shadows and get this kind of underneath. So I think that I like the fact that these can make sketching really quick. You lose some control, but I think you make up for that in the speed that you get. I'm starting to see those, those individual colors a little bit here as I color thickly. I'm going to put a little bit of that up in here too. I want to have this kind of a little bit lighter there just because it shows up against the darker shadowed hair a little bit better. Some real definite strokes there. some of that in the eyebrows as well okay so I kind of want to make her have a little bit more of a smile I think so I'm gonna try this color see if I can get a little bit darker there we go can make things a little bit more shadowed with that and I am actually putting so much pressure here on this top lip that it's actually burnishing down the other colors now, if I want to do something here and maybe lighten that up a little bit so it's a little bit more round, I can go in here with the shades of light yellow, and I can kind of burnish and blend those colors with that, and then go back in with my shades of pink and yellow. All right. A little bit more shadow with this guy. All right, and I think I had quite a bit more pink in there. Now that I'm looking at that photo compared to this, I'm going to go in with more of the, uh, the pink. I mean, it would be fine to leave it just like this, but if I'm comparing it to that one, I can see that I have way more, uh, way more color on that one. Probably because I was really enjoying uh, playing with this, these pencils, so I just didn't want the sketch to end, so I just kept adding more and more and more. I don't know if you guys ever do that, but... Now something you can do to enhance the color a bit is to use the clear blender. That will, um, it'll spread out the pigment a little bit. I'll show you here on the chin. 
and it spreads out the pigment so you see the colors a little bit richer. And it can make them seem a little darker. So if you want to do it, I would start at the edge of the face and work it inwards so you don't end up with, um, with anything too extreme. Or start it in a darker area, an area you want to be darker. And what it has is like a wax and like a pumice, I think, pumice. And it, uh, and it just uh, kind of smudges out those colors. It disrupts the wax layer. And see that just made it a lot darker. You can do that in the shadow down here too. But you don't have to you you can vary your pressure. It's kind of like a cross between an eraser and a clear pencil. All right, so for some final touches, I think I do want to go into some plain pencils. And I'm just going to use this dark brown. This is called, uh, actually, it's Tuscan Red. It's a nice like, kind of rich color. And I can go in and I can make some some more. Th these are softer. The prism colors are softer than the tritones. So I can go in and I can add quite a bit of detail right on top. I would make sure these are fairly well sharpened. So you're not getting really big, uh, so you're not adding tons and tons of thick lines. You're just getting kind of a, kind of a, uh, kind of sharper details, just final sharp details. If you want to go in, you could go in with a little bit of black in the pupils. Darken up to just key parts of the eyelashes where they'd be thicker. And I think that really sharpens everything up and makes it kind of um, kind of work together. These really feel like butter after you're working with the tritones. The tritones aren't like terribly scratchy or chalky or anything, but they're definitely um, much harder than these are. So there you have it. They're not exactly identical, but you get the gist of it anyway. Um, you can always go in with a lighter color if you feel like, well, maybe you lost some highlight in the eye or you just wanted to, whoops, you wanted to light up, lighten up a little area. You could go in with a lighter color and do that. Could add, you know, just a softer highlight on the lips if you wanted to. But that's completely up to you. I am going to look at the uh, chat for any questions. So if you do have any, please go ahead and put them right in the chat and I will check it out. Uh, if you are watching live, that is. Um, and I will look for a couple minutes to see if anybody has any questions. Uh, just a couple things I'll point out while we're while we're looking at the sketch or finishing up is that um, you can use regular colored pencils. You could just kind of switch between a few. This is a set of 12 tritones, so there isn't a ton of, um, of colors here to pick from. So, you know, use whatever you have. And if you're trying these out, you still might want to have a black or a brown or a white handy just to kind of bring up your sharper highlights. Um, um, oh, question. Does the highlight or glare have to be the same in both eyes? Oops, I had them on opposite sides when I tried the eye tutorial. Yeah, the highlights are generally going to be in the same spot because you've got like you've got like two circles and the light's coming from the same direction. So they're going to be very close to the same size unless you have the, the eyelashes blocking the highlight on one side. Uh, question, any general rules for male faces different from female? Um, yeah, generally on a male man's face, you're going to have um, um, harder angles less curves more more flat edges so that's um less the lips are usually less full um that's generally a, you'd have more squared off jaws and uh it's more angular noses let's see i'm gonna grab the last couple questions and then i'm gonna sign off so yay audio back awesome okay so i'm just gonna scroll back and try to find some of these questions um Okay, Baru wonders, when will you be back from vacation? I will be back on the 13th, back to, uh, I'll be back probably a day before that, but <clears throat> I'm gonna say the 13th. Um, what's the pencil that I use to blend? It's just a clear colorless blender pencil and pretty much 
any company, any pencil company will make their own version. I've used the Prismacolor. This is the Koli Noor version. All, um, all of the different brands have them. <clears throat> and let's see. Question, any tips for drawing hands? Hands are very difficult because they can look really awkward. You can get a uh, posable hand um, from an art supply shop and you can kind of move them around and draw from that. Or you can kind of draw your own hand, just kind of set your hand down and sketch it and just keep, you know, trying different poses until you get the um, the the technique down. But generally, I would try to break it down, like maybe draw that as one shape. This is one shape. This is one shape. And then try to get the negative spaces and just start really broad. Don't try to detail anything until you have got those basic shapes down. Uh, question, do you have any tips for practicing noses? Encouraging Hope wants to know. Um, well, like I did with the circles, you can start that way. Um, you can find books on drawing all different parts of the anatomy. Um, but I would basically find pictures of people and try to draw their noses. It's kind of, um, it's good if you can draw from people in real life, because if you look on photographs online, a lot of times they're kind of airbrushed and the noses are minimized with makeup. So if you can find somebody to sit and pose for you, that's going to be a better way to draw noses. Okay, and I'm seeing this, if there's any more questions. Um, okay, I think that I'm all caught up on the questions. I will go and try to clip out that bad audio <laughs> before the replay is available next week. I want to thank you so much for watching, guys. And um, until next time, happy crafting.